Call the air and that lets you save the Who cares? True form life. Green look on the Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. Whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world, we certainly wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for tuning in today on this show. Today, you got me one-on-one solo. We're talking about the benefits of living with less. And I got to tell you, We just got back from a trip to Sri Lanka, and I got so much to share with you. I want to let you know what everything we've learned. There's so much, so many takeaways, but today I want to specifically talk about living with less because it seems like the more we have, the less happy we are, and I think that's what we're all looking for is happiness. So I want to tell you about a little bit about our our trip. I want to touch on that of Sri Lanka, but I really want to focus on the benefits of living with less. So stay tuned. We got all that coming up. Uh... This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, so here we are. Let's rock this mic today. Let's get after this show. Super excited to be back here with you guys. And not too long ago, we had the opportunity to travel to Sri Lanka. And for the longest time, I was calling it Sri Lanka. That's definitely incorrect. It's (laughs) S-R-I. I think most people know what I'm talking about when I'm saying Sri Lanka or Sri Lanka, however it comes out. But it's uh, it was an amazing experience. Absolutely incredible. It's so many takeaways. And when we, people ask us, like, how was your trip? It was really difficult to, to be like, oh, to tell someone how the trip was in just a few minutes. But it really was amazing. There were so many things that we learned, so many things that we got to see. And now it's only been, at the time of this recording, it's only been a couple of weeks out since we've been back. And it's almost like a dream or like a fairy tale. You think back and it was these bright green, lush environment and there was red dirt and Oh my gosh, the fruit was amazing and the people were amazing. And when I when when we asked were asked what what can we say in in a short amount of time? So I thought I would do a whole show and explain what it was like or give you some ideas on what we experienced, but I think for me the biggest takeaway was the value or the benefits of living with less And when I say less, I mean, those of us in North America, and I know there's people listening on as a podcast around the world as well, but most of us that have the ability ability to listen to a podcast, for example, we have tools and technology and things like electronics, let's say what I'm saying, things like we have phones and we have computers where we have the ability to listen. And in a place like Sri Lanka, they don't have these things. They don't have... And don't get me wrong, they have computers and they have phones, but very few do. And I ran into a couple people that had laptops and the laptops didn't really work properly. The keyboard didn't work very well or all the keys didn't work or didn't plug in properly. And then those that had phones, they had old Nokia, what we would call an old Nokia. And they might have a new Nokia, what they would call a new phone. And it has, you actually, you push the buttons almost like an older Blackberry and we, you know, we have smartphones and a lot of them can't access social media or they can't access their apps. So for us to talk about things like materialistic things, we're surrounded by them constantly. And I don't think that we realize the things that are materialistic or the things that aren't necessary in our day to day lives. And for us that we've become accustomed to this, like most people say, Oh, I couldn't live without my phone, <laughs> which is, which is kind of funny. If you come from a country like that or you you visited and you're like, oh my gosh, like most people don't sit on social media all day. And I'm talking about most people in the world, not North America or not uh, maybe Europe. Or I know we have quite a few listeners in Australia, for example. 
these are countries that have money. Like we have a lot of money and I'm not saying like different individuals, but we have paved roads and we have proper insurance and we go to the dentist on a regular basis. Like these things aren't necessities to live. I would call them luxuries. The things because, and the thing to me is that thing that stands out the most to me is that for the most part, it's because of where we've grown up is because of where we were born and we could have very easily been born in another country where we didn't wouldn't have these luxuries or we wouldn't have these things that might make things life a little bit easier but I'm going to get into why they may might make things a little more a bit more complicated as well so I think the whole experience of traveling and I, and I believe that anyone that has been to a country that is poor in a country that doesn't have the things that we have like we have friends that have been to Africa, for example, and there's other parts, many parts of the world that don't have the things that we have. And you know, what, you know, what's crazy to me is that they have so little and they're so happy. And it's incredible to me because we feel like the more things that we have, the happier that we're going to be. When I'm talking about the necessities of life are the things that other countries may not have. We have entire basements that we use as storage. So instead of living in, and then many of us live well above our means. So we're in credit card debt. I know people don't like it when I say that, but it's true. A good majority of our population or uh, those that live in these developed countries and <laughs> have lots of things, we live in credit card debt. We buy cars we can't afford and we buy houses that we can't afford either. So we live to pay that. So all the money that we make goes straight to our house, goes straight to our credit card. So we're not really living, I don't think. That's how I feel anyways. And I imagine there's a lot of people that are not necessarily going to agree with all the words that I have to say in this show, but I'm okay with that. I think we're all entitled to our opinion. This is just me sharing from the heart and sharing from my experiences in traveling abroad and, and looking at different environments and how people live. But before we get into the show, I just want to mention Complete Truth Protein. This is a plant-based protein supplement that we've designed ourselves at Trueform. And the reason I designed it is because I felt like there was a need in the industry. Now, when I was traveling around the world and I had a, I literally had a tackle box full of supplements and products and vitamins that did a whole lot more damage than good. So when I started doing more personal training and fitness classes, people would ask me what types of supplements I'd recommend. And I always say, eat food. <laughs> so that's why I've designed Complete Truth Protein around food. It's made with quinoa and hemp seeds. And one of the main benefits that it offers is improved digestion. So many of us deal with digestion issues on a regular basis. It also gives you a natural boost of energy. So if you head over to trueformlife.com slash complete truth protein, we have tons of more details, videos, recipes, and everything you need to get going in the right direction with a good quality protein supplement. Trueformlife.com slash complete truth protein. Trueformlife. When we have these big houses, for example, and you have a, a basement that's not being used, like we're paying for that in some way. Like we're paying for that with the, the things that we carry and the things that we store and we're paying our mortgages. And these are the things that we're, we're paying with in different ways besides financially as well. Like all the things, like all the clutter that we can, we, how do we say, how do I say the things that we collect over the years, these things weigh us down. And I don't think that we need them. Well, I know that we don't need them, but I don't think that we need to collect them. It's not going to give us any more happiness. It's not going to give us any more joy in our lives. So if we could realize that and realize that we don't need to continue to collect things because it's not going to give us any joy in our life, then maybe we'll stop. And maybe these things will stop weighing us down. It's so interesting for me to compare the worldly experiences that I've had and throughout my travels and I think I want to share that because I think sometimes we don't get a chance to travel. I know a lot of people that haven't had the opportunity and I hope they do. Like I hope we all could take the opportunity to see how other people live and how other people communicate and how other people enjoy their lives. And for me, again, it's just so eye opening. I wanted to share this with you because it it's like for us, we need to have like everyone has their own car, for example, like even if you work in the same place, I know people that work in the same place, each of them have the same car. Uh, everyone has a different car in a family. Even kids have cars now, like kids, kids are getting cars at a younger age. Both the parents have a different vehicle, like one family in Sri Lanka probably doesn't have a car. 
or they they take tuk tuks, which is kind of like a, what they would call a, a cab. So it's someone that's riding like a little three wheeler with a roof on it, and they cram a bunch of people in the back, and then there's one person driving in the front. That's like a cab, and they call that a tuk tuk. And they drive those all over the place. They drive those up the mountain. They drive those down the street or on what they would call a highway. And <laughs> so for us in North America, for example, we have all these vehicles. Like every person has a vehicle. Every person has a cell phone. But that's not all. We don't just have a cell phone. We have a laptop. And then we have tablets or iPads. So we have all these things that we feel are necessities. And really, we could get by without them. And then I would go, of course, I I have to revert back to happiness and talking about how we feel like, oh, I I need to have the newest iPhone, then I need to have the newest iPad, and then I probably have a Mac computer as well. And and then we, we feel like if we don't have these things, our life is going to be less enjoyable and I think it's the opposite and and again it was so eye-opening because when you go to a country like Sri Lanka and you see all these people that are getting by without these things like they're doing just fine <laughs> and I mean it's a poor country don't get me wrong like sometimes we went to a family's home that had very little food to share for example and just to see that on tables or to see that in, in families and how maybe some homes were dirt floors and or some families had very little ability to like they just uh, maybe they didn't have the tools or maybe they didn't have the knowledge and it it was a bit sad and it was very emotional like it was a very emotional trip all around and I think that that was something that we'll think about or remember most about being in Sri Lanka and being a part of their culture so we did take a two-week tour but then from there we lived with our friends in our friend's village and it was like in the middle of the island. So we're in the middle of the island in this tiny village. And we would walk around. And of course, everyone would stare at us because we looked very different than them. And they'd wonder what we're doing. Like, it's not a tourist attraction. So they're like, what are they doing here? I'm sure some of them thought we were lost or some of them thought we weren't where we were supposed to be. But everyone was super friendly and very welcoming. We brought little toys around for the kids. We had a whole suitcase we brought of donations. A lot of people donated items to us. So we were able to give them out. And that was probably one of the most gratifying things I've done in my life. And, and like, it's just very odd. Like, usually, like here, of course, here in Canada, you don't walk around and give a kid a toy. Because it would, I think it would almost be an insult. It would be odd. <laughs> and then they probably have a couple of them anyways. So like, what do I need that for? And I thought about that because that was something I really enjoyed. And I wanted to do that here as well. Like I wanted to do that in Los Angeles. I wanted to do that in Canada. But it was too challenging. Like it's just, I think it's too challenging. And, and I don't think there would be a whole lot of gratification around it as well. So we think of other ways to give. Like we go to the local churches and we ask them if they need any food donated or anything. Like last year we brought school supply, a bunch of school supplies at the beginning of the year. And in Los Angeles, we usually go buy food and and bring them around to the homeless. But there's a lot of things that we can do to give. And giving makes us feel better. I think it makes us live, you know, offers a better world for us to live in if we're all willing to give just a bit more. But for us to feel, to see that, to see that in Sri Lanka, they would give us anything, like anything we wanted, anything they had, they would give us. And they really didn't have much at all. So any food they would have for that day, they probably fed us in one meal what they would have for a week just because they wanted to offer as much as they could for us and to be around those type of people. And it is, you know, as interesting as the kids, they just wanted to be around us. They just want to hang around us. And we couldn't really speak their language. Their language is Sinhala. Of course, our language is English. And they spoke a few words. They learned a little bit in school. Some of the adults could speak quite a bit better English. And and then some spoke none at all. So it was very challenging to communicate. But something that I really enjoyed was, and it sounds it sounds awkward and it was it was awkward but i enjoyed feeling awkward <laughs> in the re- in the reason that we weren't able to communicate and i and i say i enjoyed it because we we did communicate but it was awkward because we w- weren't able to communicate in the english language so we had toys and we had we brought crayons and coloring books and little games so we were able to play with the kids a little bit with the parents you're able to smile you can make gestures 
they would give us drinks or food. And then when people are visiting us at the place that we're staying at, we would do the same. And you can smile. And there was a lot of ways you can communicate. And I just enjoyed it because I think sometimes our conversations are cluttered with words. Like, just want to take a minute to mention Complete Truth Protein again. This is a protein supplement that we designed at True Form. We believe in food. We believe food heals, cures, and prevents. That's why this product is much different than your conventional types of products. Unfortunately, packed with chemicals, preservatives, toxins that our body doesn't know how to utilize, digest, and absorb. So that's why Complete Truth Protein can help improve your digestion and will offer a natural boost of energy. You can find more details at trueformlife.com slash Complete Truth Protein. Have you, I think we've all been there. Like, have you ever been in a conversation where it's not a conversation at all? Someone's just talking at you. They just they don't they're not listening to you. They're not waiting for a reply. They don't want to know your opinion. They're not asking a question. They're not talking to you. They're talking at you. And that's one of the least conversations I, I, I want to be a part of. I mean, well, without a doubt, that's the number one conversation I don't be a part of, don't want to be a part of. But I feel like it happens so often that people just want to be heard and they want to talk and that's all they're concerned about. They don't really want to have a, a conversation or they don't want to have any type of relation in that moment. And for us to sit there in Sri Lanka with perfect strangers and be able to communicate without using words and finding different ways to connect and to uh, be a part of each other in that moment it was so interesting to me and was so, I think it was heartwarming more than anything because you would leave these people and you would feel like you were a part of them almost. And it's so hard to describe if you haven't experienced it, but you, f- you feel like a deeper connection than you would from a stranger where you just talk to for a few minutes. When you sit there and you're in someone's company and you're not really sure what to say and you have some gestures of <laughs> we understood a few words they understood a few words so we, we we talked a little bit back and forth but i think we communicated pretty well for not being able to speak each other's language and that really meant something to me because of the connection and because of what we were able to accomplish with the little that we had so that was something i wanted to share with you as well but one of the things that we decided to do when we got back from Sri Lanka is get rid of stuff. <laughs> get rid of stuff. And I don't live in a big area, to be quite honest with you, like a big home. Like I don't have a huge, huge house. I don't live in a mansion. Our place at the beach is just a small apartment. Like we live in, in a small area, so we already don't have a lot of things. Don't have a garage to pack a bunch of stuff in. Um, I have a basement here in Canada, but it's not packed with a bunch of things. And so we already started with a few things, but coming back here and being like, oh my gosh, all these things that we have, like we had two teapots, for example. What do we need two teapots? For? Never used two teapots at one time in my life. Never, I've never even, we were just in Sri Lanka and they had tea everywhere you went. They didn't even have two. They didn't need to. <laughs> like if you, if you have eight people over and your teacup fits four cups, so you pour four cups and then you go make another teapot. And pour more four, four more cups. You, you, you just don't need it. So we had two teapots. Vases, for example. Like, how many times do you go to the market and buy four bouquets of flowers? So you just in case, just so you have four, just in case you do that, you have four vases. It, or some people call them vases. <laughs> if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's a container, like a glass container you put your flowers in. What do you have? We have four of them. We had three or four of them. What do we need four of them for? So we got rid of three. Now we got one. <laughs> just make it very simple all the, like we had plates and glasses we're not using jars like there it's just endless the things that we have and we came back and we were just like I said like I'm like I'm telling you here it was just an eye-opening experience and we're like we don't need these things they weigh us down and they clutter our lives they clutter our minds for me like I really I like to keep a clean car <laughs> that, that's like a little bit of OCD in me like I need to have a clean car it needs to be dusted no there's no we don't have any food in the car there's no trash bags there's no garbage it's dusted if I'm at a red light I don't pick up a phone or text I'm on the, on the cell phone I'll, I'll take out a little cloth and wipe the car down <laughs> that might be crazy to some of you but that's something that I do. So we don't have a lot of things is what I'm getting at. But when you get rid of things that you don't need, it's so uplifting and it's freeing. And we feel like the opposite. We feel like the more we collect, the more things that we have, 
that that it's going to bring us more 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 gratification or more happiness and it's just not true so one of the things that i want to ask you to do it's a call to action if you will i want to ask you to get rid of a few things in your kitchen and in your bedroom that you don't use and you maybe you could choose maybe you go in the garage or maybe you go in the basement but just give it a try and for me it's a bit contagious so we have a, something called a buy and sell where you can put things on the buy and sell and people will buy them. So we've been to the thrift store a number of times already and I've sold a handful of items on the buy and sell. And it's kind of fun. Like you throw something up there for five bucks or 10 bucks, or whatever it is. I don't really expect a lot. For me, when we have something that we don't use and someone else could use it, why are we holding on to it? And, it, and you know, I think a lot of times people think because you have something, it's worth money. Just because you have something doesn't mean it's worth money. Doesn't mean, it's certainly not worth the value you bought it from. You bought it for, and in most cases, if you get rid of it, it's worth that space is worth more to you than hanging on to an item you think is worth what you bought it for. So for for me, when I get rid of something, I'm not like, how much money can I get for this? Of course, if it's like a diamond or something, like I don't have anything like that though. <laughs> <laughs> and just the, just the things that, that we've learned and the things that we experienced in this short amount of time, we're gone for four weeks, so a month, and for us to be able to come back and be like, oh my gosh, like we have all these things to get rid of, let's get rid of them. So I feel like if I have this, why not, and I'm not using it, why not give it to someone else that can use it? It was meant to be used, but we hold on to these th- things, and you know what goes through my mind is like, oh, I've got that. And I'm like, if I don't use it, I should get rid of it. So I think, well, maybe I should start using it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Because, but I'm not going to use it. I just want to mention Complete Truth Protein here once again before I let you go. This is a protein supplement we designed ourselves made with quinoa and hemp seeds, also maca and stevia. We have two different types of products. They both have tons of health benefits. You can bake the original bag you can bake with. It's perfect for gluten-free flour. If you're celiac or gluten intolerant, we have tons of recipes on trueformlife.com which include raw protein balls. People absolutely love these ones. We have pancakes, cookies, muffins, all healthy, all clean ingredients. Dorothy puts these together for us on a weekly basis. So if you head over to trueformlife.com, head over to the recipe section. We have all kinds of recipes on how you can use Complete Truth Protein. It's also a vegan and raw product. So if you have any intolerances or if you have any issues with digestion, this will definitely help you out. Once again, that's trueformlife.com slash complete truth protein. And one of the things for me was, which was a bit challenging, is I always dreamed of having a library in my home because I really love books. I love, love books. I'm always reading a book. I mean, always reading a book or two. I sometimes I read three or four at a time. And uh, many times I go to the library. So I'm like, what do I have all these books for? If most of the time I go to the library and get books there. And I, I love the library. I think it's an incredible resource full of knowledge. And I believe knowledge is power. So why more of us don't use that power I will never understand, but that's a side note, mini rant, (laughs) rant over. But I have all these books here, and and I'm fortunate to have this radio show here, Exploring Mind and Body, and people send books, publishing houses send books all the time to see if we want to have the authors on the show. So we get books from them. And then people give us books as gifts, and we have books that people throw away, so I think I should have those around town here, or actually everywhere I've been, in LA, Canada, wherever, they have those book books like little book places where you can bring a book and leave it and then you take another book so you kind of trade it and then at the libraries they're often giving away books or they have book sales for like 10 cents a book or 25 cents a book kind of bothers me as an author i've authored uh, a few books and i have another one coming out here shortly for entrepreneurs and i like books they take so much time and i feel like they offer so much value and they're so delicate to me not just the book itself and the pages and how i hope they preserve stay preserved forever but the knowledge that they possess and the gift that you're giving when writing a book or reading a book and then i feel like we devalue them so much like i tried to donate a bunch of books to the library and they're like oh no we don't want they took like and try to donate 15 books and they took two and i'm like well why, like, why isn't someone reading these books? Why aren't they taking them? They're brand new. They're they're beautiful and they're perfect. But they're like, oh, we get too many donations. We can't carry all these books. And I'm not saying I know what they go through. Like maybe they go through like someone donates a thousand books and they only have so much space. But for me, I feel like we should value books a bit more. 
at any rate, <laughs> get to, to get to finish my story here, I was hoping to have my own library and I thought, I don't need to carry these books. Like I have so many books, I don't need to carry them. I don't need, need my own library, at least at this time in my life. And if I do, I can go around and collect books for 10 cents. <laughs> and I think I could have a huge library if I really wanted to. So books is something that we got rid of. DVDs, like we have tons of DVDs that we don't even watch anymore. So we just carry on, we just hold on to these things. They weigh us down and for no reason at all, other than I think the false mindset of they, they, these things give us happiness. And I think if you were to get rid of some of the things, which I want to challenge you to do, which I want to encourage you to do, the call to action today in this show is to go and get rid of a few things and see how it feels. And I think it, it's going to be uplifting and it's going to be freeing. It's going to make you feel great. And just like me, you're going to want to get rid of a few more things. And then you realize that you don't need so many things in your life. And as we as we accumulate, in our lives, it's not going to bring us more happiness. It's not going to offer us anything more than we already have through our memories and through our experiences and through the love. I saw this I saw this post on social media the other day, and it said someone asked the question, post a picture of something you're grateful for. And it was all family, all family, all friends, all kids, people laughing, playing together. It was no things. It wasn't a pencil that you've had for 10 years it wasn't old books or movies or dvds it was it was nothing material and i think that we got we get caught up in the things in our lives that are material possessions that we don't need without a doubt we don't need them to live we don't need them to survive and of course some things give us more pleasure so maybe a new phone gives you pleasure but you don't need four other devices that do the exact same thing you know, you know what I mean? That's all I'm getting at. And if you're one of those people that like to collect things that, and that, that's where you find your happiness, that's perfectly fine. That's, that's how you, that's how you operate. That's how you do it. All I'm saying is, is for me. And I think a lot of people in this world, we don't need the things that we have. So if you start to get rid of a few things, you might feel better. You might feel free you might feel uplifted for, for me to get rid of things. It's like, Oh my gosh, I, I didn't need that. What was I carrying it for? And it's freeing. Cause you're like, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to store it. You don't have to make sure it's okay or in good condition or whatever you want to do with it. Most people don't plan on selling things in the future. They just plan on holding it. Like what's your plan with that? Eh, I don't know. I just want to hold on to it for now. <laughs> so maybe ask yourself when you're looking at a few things in your home and whatever it is that you have, like, do I really need that? Like we go to Costco or Ikea and we get things that we don't even have room for. We just think that it's a good sale or a good deal. So we throw that on the credit card too. And we don't really think about, you know, we don't think about those things that we don't, we don't need them. They're not going to offer us anything just because they're a good deal. We have clothes in our closets with price tags on them. And there's no room in our landfills for clothes anymore. We just don't have any room. And what do we do with clothes that we th give to the thrift store that they can't use? They donate them, and if you can't donate them, they throw them away. And that's, I mean, that's the reality of it. Like, I go to thrift stores myself. I like to go to thrift stores. It's fun. <laughs> I don't always need to buy the new clothes or new like new material. And I think that we could, many of us could make better steps to being more, less materialistic and more environmentally conscious and more giving, I suppose, instead of always taking and having and holding. I don't think that gives us any more happiness. I'm going to leave you with that, though. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in, being a part of our True Form Life community. If you're listening uh, on Terrestrial Radio or if you're listening as a podcast, regardless, we're so grateful to have you here with us and be a part of everything that we do. I'm hoping that we offer a different perspective, maybe a, a better quality of life through lifestyle, nutrition, fitness, everything that we do. We have a, a, a free app on iTunes if, you have a, if you're an Apple user. So you can download the show there. You can take us with you wherever you go. We appreciate those downloads and we appreciate your support there. Reviews always make a difference. We always appreciate reviews. They brighten my day and they help the show as well. And being, being more easily found, I suppose, that makes a difference. And I just want to thank you for being here. That you guys make You guys make a difference in my world. There's a lot of things that we are minimalizing and taking away and, and changing our business. This whole Sri Lanka experience changed our lives in so many ways. And uh, to to run this radio show, I was thinking about some of the, like the things that I enjoy doing in business and things that I don't. And this is without a doubt one of the things I'm going to hold on to and keep doing and, and carrying on and sharing 
my message with you and hoping that it changes some lives and helps them make some improvements or making some differences. So uh, I want to thank you again for being here and changing my life and being a part of it as well. So I'm going to leave you with that. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.